How to set yourself up for disappointment. Step one, scroll through the internet and get inspired. Step two, stop and think, hey, I can do something like that. Step three, pour your heart and soul into making that thing. Step four, post it. This is gonna be the one that blows up. Step five, wait for all of the likes and amazing feedback on your work. Step six, get disappointed in yourself, begin to doubt your skills, resent spending all that time on the project. Step seven, stop trying altogether. If you're a creative person like me, you've probably experienced this before. I've had so many points in my career where my expectations of the things I make are so unreasonably high that it crushes my spirit when I'm unable to achieve the results I was hoping for. But why do we hold such high expectations of ourselves? Are we being fair? And where did these expectations even come from? If you don't know me, I'm Matthew Encina. This is me, hardworking, driven. In both academic and professional settings, I've always excelled. You give me a goal, a few rules to follow, and I can execute. And I take pride in that. To be the person you can count on to deliver great work. This is the expectation I have of myself and what I think people have come to expect from me. But every so often, I screw up. I fail. And I personally have such a hard time dealing with that because in those moments, I feel like I let people down and that I'm falling so short of who I'm supposed to be. Obviously, this isn't a healthy attitude to carry around, so I needed a little help to gain some objective perspective on dealing with my unusually high expectations. Because I think a lot of people think about expectations when either they've fallen short of one mm -hmm. or deeply disappointed someone or themselves. Mm. And then that's when they find themselves and they're like, wait a second. What was expected of me? Why was that expected of me? Not until then do they start unpacking and trying to figure out where did this come from? Why was I carrying it around? Um, was that by choice or was it given to me? There may be so many people that feel the way that we feel when we start talking more about um, specific expectations and they may not realize it or have the language for it. And then when they hear this conversation, they're like, oh, that's that heavy feeling that I'm carrying around with me. This is Melanie Whitney. She's an educator and the founder of The Common Collective. She teaches interpersonal communication in universities and in workshops. I sat down with her to discuss the idea of expectations, where they come from, what it looks like, and our relationship to them. I think one of the most vital things that we can do for ourselves is examine the all the different layers of expectations and the conditioning. So you have the cultural layer, right? You're you were raised in a certain culture and you may have certain expectations that are connected directly to that culture. As uh, the eldest of so many siblings, you may have expectations, right? As the eldest, even your occupation, if you're a nurse, a lawyer, a doctor, whatever it is, people then project, oh, if you're a nurse, you must be also all these things, right? I mean, the layers are endless of all the different institutions that program these expectations in us. And I think we operate a lot of the time unconsciously by these expectations. So being able to bring some consciousness and awareness to, wow, these are all the ways I have been conditioned and programmed. And that is why I'm carrying the weight of these expectations because they, if I fulfill the expectations, I feel good about myself. This made me think of my own life. I'll admit, I've always seen my life like a video game. 
a world of rules and predictable outcomes where I have complete control. I set goals and work towards them, and when I accomplish them, I just feel so good. But what if, like we said earlier, what if that doesn't happen? What if you don't? I always ask my students when they, or I mean anyone I'm doing coaching with, uh, say, this is my goal, this is what I'm going to do. I'm like, great, and what if that doesn't happen? Well, then I'm going to be devastated. <laughs> and I'm like, no. They're like, well, then I'm a failure. <laughs> no, you're not a failure. So I always say, don't be attached to a specific outcome, but be committed to the journey and the unfoldment and the evolution. I just think there's so much power in becoming aware, just aware of the expectations that we put on ourselves and that we put on to others. Because then you can say, there's the expectation, and then you can reverse engineer where it came from, why, you know, what weight does it carry, et cetera. I just think that's one of the most powerful things you could do for your, your self growth. You know, for me, this hit me pretty hard to realize all the expectations that have been placed on me and all of the expectations I have of myself. I've given each of these so much value because honestly, I measure my self worth by my accomplishments, which I think is pretty common in our performance-driven culture. There's one particular experience that happened to me recently that is a clear example of this. Last year, we created this series, Building a Brand. It was new, fresh, and fun for the channel. It's a show that gave an inside look at the process of working with clients from first meeting to final delivery. It took a long while to document and edit, but when we finally released the series in the summer of 2019, it was an amazing success. Each episode got hundreds of thousands of views. We got so much generous love from you, the community, and it felt great. After the success of building a brand, we decided to create another series. I thought, wow, People really love this inside look behind the scenes. Let's give them more of that. Let's show them more personal and vulnerable moments of being a creative professional. I thought this new series would deliver exactly what the community wanted. So I released the trailer a few days ahead of the launch of this series. And man, it was so well received. There was so much excitement from both our audience and the internal team here. And it seemed like this was going to outperform anything we'd ever done to this point. After a few months of production, we launched our new series, Design From Scratch. The comments started to roll in and well, these were the types of responses we were getting. The numbers came nowhere close to what we did on building a brand, and I started to question myself. Isn't this what the audience wanted? I thought we had this figured out. Our team gave so much of ourselves into this new series. Why did we get such a lukewarm response? For me, this series fell pretty short of my expectations. I felt pretty awful, like I let a lot of people down because I didn't deliver. And I was really disappointed in myself, and I felt guilty and ashamed. And it's funny, you bring up shame, and that shame is paralyzing when you, especially for someone who was so, school was easy, like things come easy, and then when you fall flat on your face and you are humbled by the world, it that shame is it's like, it's very hard to process because then you don't feel good enough. Then it creeps into your self-esteem and then now you have self-doubt. And then next time, especially as a creative, you stick your neck out there. You feel like, is that going to happen again? Right? Am am I going to fall down on my face again? Here's the problem I think many of us face. Our expectations become so inflated because of the success from past experiences. We get fixated on an imaginary projected outcome that we don't leave any room for failure or learning, leaving us disappointed in ourselves when we fall short of our goals. These experiences scar us. It's been a couple of months since the release of Design From Scratch, and I've had some distance from the situation. 
Looking back now, rereading the comments, they aren't that bad. Actually, there's a lot of love and constructive criticism in there. But at the time, I couldn't hear those things. But I can see them more objectively now. My bloated expectations really made that experience far worse than it actually was. I share this with all of you to tell you, you're not alone. It's okay to have moments when you're not performing at the top of your game. No one expects you to hit a home run every single time. You don't have to be perfect and you don't have to live up to the expectations of others. Take it slow and take it easy on yourself. You shouldn't expect yourself to be more than who you are right now. Because you, you are enough. I'm so glad to be back on this channel. You'll be seeing more of me experimenting with new formats and new content. Let me know in the comments what you think about this new type of video. I swear this time I can handle the feedback. And if you like today's guest, Melanie Whitney, I've left links in the description for you to find out more about her. Our conversation was over an hour together, so if you want to hear more from it, let us know. That's it for me. If you want to support our mission at The Future, don't forget to check out thefuture.com where we have courses and products to help you grow. That's the easiest way you can support us in the content we make here. I'll see you all in the future.